And we should be live. I think, yes, we are. How's everyone doing? Can you hear me okay? There is, there should be quite a lot of background noise because I have the printer here and it has quite a loud fan. I have the AC going, so hopefully you can still hear me. <laughs> if not, I'll have to switch the AC and just sweat myself to death. Okay, let's leave that there. Hey, Derek, I think it was, right? Was it, was it Derek? Yes, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Derek from Mosaic Manufacturing with us tonight. Good evening, Randy. Jar Cristal. <laughs> Good evening, Luca. <laughs> Martin, Matt One UK, Gentleman Scoundrel, Rui, perfect. So, an interesting live stream tonight. Shena Shena Wagga Wagga. Kollosh <laughs> Hadida Luca, but only English here. <laughs> hey, Zep Raps. Henry, Turankarn, Ismail, good evening. <laughs> hey, Kevin, King Harry from Germany and Danny from the Netherlands. So, tonight, I've had the palette for quite some time now. Um, I've had the palette and then I got the palette plus. And I haven't done a video yet on it for very specific reasons, which I will get to shortly. Um, but I've been using it a lot and today I actually recorded an episode uh, which should be out I think on Monday about purge blocks how they work comparing the palette to the Prusa to the Sigma purge and not exactly sort of competing between one another to see who has the purge the best purge block but just an explanation of how they work, why they have to exist, why they exist the way they do, and some reason that some reasons where you cannot modify them and some where you possibly could. So that should be an interesting and very long episode. <laughs> hey, the, the Guinness. <laughs> I'm doing good, Ismail. Thank you. Christian Ortiz, hello from Florida. Hey, Mike, <laughs> the purge. Yes, those of you who follow me on Twitter have seen me post a photo today. Um, I have the desk pretty much full of purge blocks. It's, um, I think I have over two and a half kilos of purge blocks in total. So, yeah, quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need a bigger office. And hopefully within a couple of months, we'll move to a new place and... We uh, will have a much better office, much better view on the camera as well. Good evening, Frederick. Hey, Mike. Good evening. So, yes, the giant Bulbasaur. That was sent to me by Mosaic themselves. I didn't print that. I printed most of these things here, but I did not print that. I will eventually. <laughs> okay, so where it's 10 o'clock here so it's time for me to start and i want to talk a bit about the palette plus so for those of you unaware uh the palette plus is this white box right here and the amount of engineering that that box has is absolutely crazy so what it does is it takes four different filaments and what it does is it slices and joins together the filament to make one consecutive strand of filament. And to give you an idea, I have these here. So let me see if I can. There you go. So this, hold on, because I wasn't prepared for this part. <laughs> Uh, 
Hey, demons. Yes, I kind of took a bit of a break from live stream. Wanted to enjoy some time with my family. So, as I was saying, the palette grabs different filaments, either different colors or different materials, and joins them together in one single strand of filament. So any printer, pretty much any printer, um, or most of every most printers that take 1.75 millimeter filament can actually print in multicolor or multi-material. And just to give you an idea, this right here is a strand. Actually, you cannot see it very well. Hold on, let me see if we can do this. You can see it here. You see this? This is pretty much clear PLA and TPU. And it's actually quite strong. Now, this is the Palette Plus. With the Palette, it was very different, the way it joined filaments together. Um, and they used to break off much more easy than this. This is really strong, so that's exceptionally good news. So, back to the Palette Plus. So, what happens is, the Palette pushes one strand of filament into the printer, and before it goes into the printer, it has a scroll wheel over here, which I can show you by grabbing my camera and show you right here. You see that? This is a scroll wheel. Now, what happens is, ooh, hold on. As the filament is going through, um, the scroll wheel is telling the Palette Plus how much filament the printer is actually using. And that is the only way it is connected to the printer. It's not a closed loop system. It only has a couple of functions, either one, one of them being during the print, where it pauses to send pings, so it can tell the palette which position it's at, and the scroll wheel, which tells the palette how much filament is being fed, and it recalibrates itself along the way. But we'll get to that in a bit. Palette Plus is, in fact, cheaper than the old one. Hey, Otavio, Chris. And yes, this is Dino. Like this, Dino? This was printed on the Dagoma Neva. This is a multi-part print. And it's printed fully in uh, Elixir PLA. It's absolutely awesome. Evening, Miggy Man Mike. So what I plan to do today is not just tell you about the palette, but I want to show you how you slice a model. And then I'm going to load a model. I'm going to load a dual color Marvin. And it's going to print. So you guys can actually see how it prints and how it performs. Miggy Man Mike. It, honestly speaking, I think it's about $750. Um, once you realize the amount of engineering and mathematics involved in this machine, it is absolutely mind-blowing. It's truly, truly mind-blowing. Hey, Mark. Greetings from Mjar. <laughs> Yes, the rotary encoder. That's what it's called, not scroll wheel. Apologies. The palette is expensive or will be expensive. But for 750, honestly speaking, if you're thinking of printing in multi-material, don't forget that that stays the same. When you upgrade the printer or buy a bigger printer or a different printer, you can still attach it to that. You're not limited to just the printer you're using it on. Thanks, it's cool. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the um, my screen here. Hold on. And I'm going to do this. So, this is Simplify 3D. $799, that's it. So this is obviously Simplify 3D. It is the same exact profile I constantly use, which is the Enervision EV160 profile, which is this awesome little machine right here. 
Um, and it's, let me find the downloads, because I just downloaded Marlin once again. Nope, oh, not there. So what you do is you throw in the two parts of the dual colored Marvin. And as you can see here, you have one part and the second part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight both and I'm going to hold shift and center and arrange. So it's basically there, all lined up. Now, this is where it differs to, um, it's future proof, but is it idiot proof? <laughs> Very little is idiot proof in this world. <laughs> So, usually what you do on dual nozzle printers is run the dual extrusion wizard, which tells you which extruder will print which part. But in this case, what you're going to do is you're going to double click on the process and you're going to select one of the models, which is up here. You're going to click OK. Then you simply add another process you change the tool number to one and you select the other part. Now, if you wanted to print in four colors, what you do is you simply add another process, change the tool to two and three. So you have four different tools. Now, what happens here is when you prepare to print, you select all, you can see that if you change this to active tool head, you can see that tool zero is printing the inner parts, the ring and part of the ears, and tool one, which is the green, which prints the rest. Are we going to be getting the Tronxy X3 video soon? Yes, you actually will get also the Tronxy X3S video soon, which is right behind me. So once that's done, you simply save it. So let me just, Remove these. So we're going to save those. And now we have saved the STL file, sorry, the G code file as we normally would. So what I'm going to do is open this software here. This is Chroma. This is the Palette Plus's software. And what you do is simply grab the print and load it in here. I'm just going to wait on that. I'm going to catch up on the, the chat. So, as you can see here, what the palette did, hold on. What the, uh, what the Chroma software did is it grabbed the G code file and it added this purge block right here to do the transitions. Now, here, what you do is you select the material. In this case, we're going to use PLA and PLA for both sides. And you can also change the color. Now, this comes in handy because when you are ready to print, the palette will tell you which color you should insert in which extruder. And that helps quite a lot. So you can actually either choose the standard color that is here or create a custom color of your own just to help you in um, in running the palette much more easy once that is done and you're happy you can see that this is the purge block size now currently the purge distance the transition distance between one color and another is 11 centimeters. That can also be arranged. There's quite a lot of things you can fix or adjust once you calibrate the printer just right. So in this case, for example, you can adjust the transition. You can adjust the transition length. Currently it's 11. On standard, it's usually 130 millimeters. You can adjust it down to 80. We'll leave it at 11 for now. You can change the target position. Um, does, it, does it change color or does it start printing midway through the purge at the end, in the beginning? 
then you have the density of the tower, of the purge tower. So once you have sliced the model in Chroma, what you do is you save for printer. And it, well done, it takes a few minutes. Now, this is what happens. That, that's all it does. So you have one file which is saved to an SD card which goes into the Palette Plus and one file which goes into the printer. So you save those on different SD cards and you throw them one in the uh, printer and one in the Palette Plus. Now, I'm not going to use this PC because I'm having issues with the SD card here. So what I will do is switch to the main camera. Now, I already have the SDs loaded up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, load the Palette Plus and show you guys the whole process. So I'm just going to actually change the webcam. I'm going to take it with me. And this is the Palette Plus. Wait, hold on. There. You can see now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on multicolor. I'm going to choose the Marvin. And it starts clearing the inside. Now it's going to give me two different colors because I had sliced it previously with two different colors. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the filament and I'm going to load it into extruder one. Once that's done, it stops by itself and it asks me to input extruder, the, the other color. And that's basically all it is. Now it starts to tell me to hold the magnet so it keeps on making filament. That magnet is here. Now if you notice, as soon as I pull this back, it stops pushing. Now, this magnet has a magnetic switch right behind this metal part here. And what happens is, as soon as that magnet moves forward and it triggers that switch, it tells the, uh, the Palette Plus to push more filament through into this PTFE tube and into the um, encoder wheel. So, let me just... It's still heating up, so it can start splicing. In the meantime, I can put this here, because that will take about a minute or two. And in the meantime, any questions? Is density of the purge block along the same lines as infill settings? Yes, it is. It's, it's pretty much the same. Um, However, the size is only um, adjusted by the transition length. Victor, I actually recorded an episode today explaining why an infill uh, is not impossible, but it's very difficult. If there is infill, and instead of a purge block, there still has to be a purge block because some models might not have enough space inside the model itself so, uh, so as to fully purge the nozzle. Hey, Lars. Any... <laughs> well, okay. Um, do you have any questions regarding the Palette Plus so far? <laughs> and the sky, the sky is not blue. <laughs> Palette Plus versus MMU Prusa i3 Mark II S. It's, for me, it's very difficult to tell you which one because they work completely differently. Um, this can be moved from any printer, but has certain limitations, whereas the Mark II S multi-material is a closed loop system, but only works for that printer. Beer of choice, uh, Chisk. <laughs> Just chill, actually. Uh, 
It's actually a C930, the webcam. So, this. So, this has started splicing. And as you can see there, you can see the pink filament going through. And we're going to follow it until it arrives to the encoder wheel. See, it went through. Now, if you notice, this is moving. However, if I move this out, it will stop producing filament. And that is because the switch inside is not triggering. As soon as I move it forward, it starts pushing material through again. Now, what I need to do is wait for it to reach this part right here. I cannot do it with my left hand. So this, come on. So this part right here is just the PTFE tube and that sort of locks it into place. These are all extras that come with the Palette Plus. Um, so basically it doesn't move anywhere and it's always in place. One very important thing to note is that if you've noticed the way it's set up, hold on. Um, the way the palette is set up in a certain angle is because I put the scroll wheel on the back. It always, it's always going to take a certain amount of space because there has to be a flow of movement which is unobstructed for the filament to go through. If you put the material add-on on the Prusa, you won't be able to print flexible material because of the Bowden system. Um, the problem with, with flexible and Bowdens is that most extruders have room to play. However, if you have, for example, um, let's say a Bontech extruder, you can still print with flexibles because there's pretty much no wiggle room um, for uh, the filament to go. Oopsie. Oh, so. Now. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to, hold on. So. What I'm going to do now is, sorry, I was concentrating, is I'm simply going to insert the filament into the extruder. I'm going to lock it into place. And then I'm going to preheat the nozzle. Let's do 200 degrees. There. Let me just wait for that to, uh, to preheat. How do you know where, how to start the printer? It will tell you. So, how does the magnet move back and forth? So, um, actually, I can show you. So this, if you notice, this PTFE tube is much thicker or much larger than this. These actually go inside each other. So when there is tension, um, this starts moving inwards inside the other PTFE tube and when it hits the uh, switch inside it actually pushes filament out. When the filament expands within the PTFE tubes it starts moving outwards again.
Comparing the palette to the purge multi-material, which one of the two uses less filament on the purge block? They can both, if you calibrate the printers right, um, both will purge the same. If you calibrate them right. And I can give you, actually I can give you an example why that's heating up. Um, there you go. Me. So, this is the purge block. Actually, you know what? Let me do this. Much easier. So this is the purge block of a Marvin I printed on the Prusa multi-material. Okay? This weighs 20 grams. The first time I printed a Marvin on uh, the Enervision, before I calibrated it, this was the purge block. And this weighed 30 grams. Once I calibrated it a bit, and I reduced the transition length, this was the second purge block for the same Marvin. As you can see, the difference is quite substantial. And that was just reducing the purge by three centimeters. This was, I think, a 10 centimeter um, um, transition length. Now this weighs as much as this. While there is a huge difference. While this is one-fourth the size of this, it doesn't mean that this weighs one-fourth the size of this because the infill here is about 50% while the infill here is 100%, so it's much heavier. This is, it's, it's, it feels empty and this you can feel that it's completely solid on the inside. So, now, Next up, what I'm going to do is, let me, hold on. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to go on my inner vision here, and I'm going to start pushing down filaments one millimeter at a time. Now, on the screen, of the palette, it actually tells you, you need to um, purge 25 millimeters, for example. And the only reason I'm not showing it right now is because I'm getting a bit of gibberish on the screen. Um, that's something I still need to sort out. <laughs> However, it starts beeping. That tells you that that's enough purging. Once it purges, And it clicks. And what it tells you is, it says super bloating. So I purged, I extruded 1.5 millimeters more than I should have. Now that that's done, all I need to do is simply start my print over here. And that's it. <laughs> Mike is off. Sorry, can you guys still hear me? Sorry, I think it went quiet because there, that should be better. Still good, you can all hear me, you can all see me. So now, that's gonna start printing. I'm just gonna make sure that the first layer is right because I don't feel like starting the process over again. Let's see. 
as you can see, oh, hold on, it's starting the print. Hey, Brian. How is the file loaded into the Palette Plus? It's through SD card. Now, over here, just going to move here. And you're going to see, as it's printing, that magnet is moving closer to the palette. It moves quite slowly, but it does move. And I'll stay like this until um, the magnet reaches the palette plus. Because right now, it's actually... So it's still pushing filament through. That's why it's not moving. Because while uh, the scroll wheel is telling the palette plus that the filament is still going through, the palette is actually slowly pushing filament through. And when it comes to do a splice, there, it stopped. See? Now, We'll put this back here. Actually, let me see if I can throw something underneath it. So you guys get a better view. There. So what the printer is doing now is it's starting to uh, do the base of the purge block. I wonder how many beer mats died. <laughs> it's not as clear as usual, the audio, uh, because I have the fan of the printer right next to me and I have the AC going. That is why. So, Hey Joe, when you are in Simplify 3D, you selected tool 0 for one part and tool 1 for the other. The printer only has one tool head. So how does that work on the printer? Does the Palette software update the G-code? Yes, it does. Chroma will update everything. Ultimately, it's just changing the tool number, but it's still using a single extruder on S3D, on Simplify 3D. So to simplify 3D, it knows it's only one single extruder, just different tool heads. And the tool heads, um, it, it's separating the instructions where chroma will determine which color goes into which one. So the first layer will be always 100%. Um, well, almost 100%. This is about 50%. Now we can go here. You'll see that it's starting to change color into yellow. Now, once the transition is done, it will simply move to the right and start printing. Any limitations? When will the next stream be? Um, either next Saturday or the Saturday after that. Any limitations on how close splices can be versus print speed? Can you run the printer too fast for the palette to keep up? Um, you possibly could uh, because it needs time to purge. However, it's, it sorts itself out by giving that leeway in the PTFE tube for the magnet. So I, I personally, I think up to 60, 70 millimeters a second, it should be fine. Hey, Eddie, thank you very much, man. Thank you. <laughs> you always have to be the first. Which do you find to be better, this or the multi-material upgrade for the Prusa? 
Honestly speaking, um, I, I don't really know which is better because in terms of print quality, the Prusa is really good. The Palette Plus will be always as good as the printer it is used on. Um, in terms of purge blocks, if it's calibrated right, they can actually be the same. Possibly the Palette could be also a little bit less, but once again, it all depends on the colors you use. And the reason why I say that is because if you use red and white, it, you need a much longer transition to clear the white, so it's completely white. How does it calculate the amount of filament to purge? So, at a, in a few minutes, what will happen is the printer will actually pause on the purge block. And I'll explain exactly what's happening there. But it calculates the amount it's purging through the encoder wheel, which is going through, which filament is going through. Hi, cool. Crawler. <laughs> Where is Nilabine? Nilabine is probably a very busy daddy right now. Do you have... Oh. I think Nilabine got trapped in his own dungeon here, possibly. So, what is a decent upgrade from the Wanhao Duplicator i3 Plus? Uh, what's your budget? I'd say wait a few weeks. <laughs> you have a little extra material. Uh, it's just a piece of hair. How well does this work with water-soluble support material? Um, this, okay, so these were sent to me by, um, hold on, me. So these were sent to me by, um, by Mosaic themselves. So this is the ball in a square, which was done with soluble support. And this is another, another print done with soluble support. And the soluble support is actually still there. Um, if I do this, there, you can actually see that the, the soluble support is still intact. So whenever I want, I can just dissolve the scaffold. So it works really well. I haven't tried it yet because my machine in particular needs a little upgrade. Um, um, and I still have to do it. Do you still have plans to put the Mark 42 on the a 8 or what's left of it? Oh, yes. I received um, awesome stepper motors today. You said you can control multiple tool heads feeding into one extruder with Simplify 3D. Do you have a Simplify 3D Mark II multi-material profile that works or do you use slicer? I specifically use the multi-material sli slicer for that. The purge block will always be bigger than the print. Um, so this, hold on, there. This is the Marvin we're printing. And this is the purge block for it. Um, Marvin weighs two grams in total, whether it's here or any other printer. A purge block will minimum, minimum weigh about 15, Minimum would be about 15 grams. This weighs 20. This also, sorry, this was for the Prusa uh, multi-material. This also weighs 20. Uh... Expect all kinds of new things to be announced around, announced around World Maker Fair. Oh yes, I completely agree with that statement. What is the best ANET 8 upgrade? Um, personally, I would say the Orbello printing steel frame. PLA, PTG, or ABS. 
Um, it handles transitions beautifully. At the moment, it still does not support ABS. Um, now, PLA and PETG, um, there is a bit of a, um, a bit of a misconception there because PLA and PETG have very different properties. So they kind of don't want to stick together. They just don't want to combine into one single splice. Um, so there are difficulties there. Uh, it also happened to me when I tried on the Prusa. So, um, I don't know if you've heard that beep. That beep is actually a ping. So, let me come back here and show you. So, if I go here and I go to statistics, whoop. I go ping offsets. And it says 102.72%. Now, that ping offset, and I'm going to try to explain this slowly, so I make sure I don't make any mistakes and you guys can understand it. As the, print, as the Palette Plus is producing filament, it's going through the scroll wheel. So the Palette knows how much filament is actually being purged, is actually being used to print. However, the Palette does not know where the print head is or where the printer is in terms of where it's at in terms of the print itself, which layer whatsoever. So Chroma sets in a few pings and it does those by um, pausing the printer on the purge block at certain uh, increments. Um, I think it does about 20 pings, 30 pings along a print. On the purge block, it stops for about 5 seconds, starts printing a bit, and after about 30 seconds, it stops for another 5 seconds. And then it continues printing. When it does those two pauses, it sends the uh, Palette Plus notices that no filament is going through because it's paused, and it takes that as a ping. Now, that tells the Palette Plus how much filament was used so far because the palette knows that at certain point there has to be a ping and that 102% means that the, in the ideal world 100% would be the right amount however it printed 102% which means it's ahead by 2.72% so what's going to happen now is the palette keeps recalibrating the splices and the amount of filaments in order to make sure that it's consistently producing the right amount of filament at the right time for transitions. And I hope I got that right. <laughs> hey, Max Dark Dog, Tivo Tarantula owner from France. I actually have a Tivo Tarantula which I still have to put together. NEMA 23. That, that would be interesting. <laughs> Can you do a Cura 2.7 setup for the ANET? You could. I don't have it though. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's another very, very, very important point. Um, as Eddie Moser just said, whether I print one or a hundred on a single printer at the same time the purge block will still remain the same size because it's only using the same transition for uh, each and every single print better question are why did i buy an anacubic cassel when i've still not finished putting my hypercube together nor finished rebuilding my f3 clone it happens miggy man like it, it trust me it happens <laughs> Why waste when you can have multiple nozzles? True, but as, I'm, as you'll find out on the video that's coming out, if you're someone who's only interested in two materials, like PLA and soluble, or ABS and soluble, or ABS and nylon, and flex and PLA, that's fine. Get a dual extrusion printer, because that will be more than enough, and the purge will be minimal. However, if you want more than that, there is only one printer that has four nozzles. Uh, I forgot what the name of it, but it costs like $8,000. So 
Sorry I'm late to the party, Joe. No worries, Filament Frenzy. What is the best CR10 upgrade? Honestly, I never did any upgrades to my CR10 because <laughs> it is just awesome. Let me just see if I can fix this, fix this a bit. There. Something unrelated. Will you be at Malta Comic Con in December as a guest? Actually, um, I might I might be there showcasing a printer. Um, a friend of mine has um, a games shop, Malta Geek Paradise, and he's setting up a stand there. So I might actually sit next to him with a printer. Oh, wow, well, I'm way behind. <laughs> how, do, how long does the palette add to the print? Um, a lot, because it has to do transition. So if it's one hour print, expect at least three hours. This Marvin will take about three hours to print. What do you think of the Flashforge Creator Pro? To be completely honest, I've never tried it. Can you do a set of video for I could try. I wonder if they'll make a version that talks to the printer directly. Whoa, that would be interesting. What would be a good 3D printer after using the ANET? Um, Pusha i3 Mark IIs kit, uh, Anacubic i3 Mega. Um, depends what you want. Or a Delta, get a Delta. Do you try anything with the diamond hot end? I have a Delta. No, not yet, actually. I might install it when I put together the Folger Tech FT5. I might use that. What is it you're printing? I'm just printing a um, dual colored Marvin. Is World Maker for New York Mayfair? Yes, it is. What settings do you, um, sorry, what settings would you use for scaffold? For scaffold, I usually use, I think it's 215 degrees, if I'm not wrong, because it's a specific temperature. Um, and that's just basically it. Hey Joe, thanks for making 3D printers and printing easy for the novice maker like me. Your live build of the eight made me buy one to try 3D printing. It's fun. From South Padre Island, Texas, USA. Thank you very much, John. What do you think would be a good step up from the NT8? Under a thousand, definitely a Prusa i3 Mark II S. <laughs> hey, Carmelo, the purge. <laughs> Should I get a CR10 after my end? It ended up being the worst printer ever purchased. Um, yes. <laughs> hey, Ben, no worries. No, Maker Dad, unfortunately, I won't make it to New York. Um, finances are a bit tight. Um, so, yeah, unless someone decides to sponsor me, I won't be able to make it. Hey, Burtmeister, what do you think is going to be announced at Word Maker Fair this year? Lars, I actually know what's going to be announced at World Maker Fair this year, but I cannot talk about it. <laughs> Hi Ben, I, uh, getting CR10 on Monday and cannot wait. On the matter of two nozzles, the second one tends to hit the print. One of my printers is Folger Flashforge Creator Pro. That's, that's one of the problems with um, dual extruder. It's finding the right height. So you have to make sure that they're perfectly, perfectly level. Prusa is offering free shipping for their Prusa. Yes, they are, actually. It possibly can, Derek. I just said this relatively slow. I can make it faster, but it prints fine like this for me. Plus, it gives me time to answer questions. 
So, Tronc CX3S, do you know something about it? It's worth 300 euros and has 330 by 330 by 400 printer. You mean this one right here behind me? <laughs> I have it. I'm uh, testing it out for review. I can tell you this though. It's not a bad printer, but hands down, it is possibly one of the, the worst kits I've ever assembled in my life. Um, what is the best filament for the solvable supports? I use either rigid, rigid ink PVA or um, E3D scaffold. Do you believe the quality of a print from a $500 printer versus, say, a 3000 justifies the price? Um, personally, no, I don't. Yeah, Ben, I can't wait to be there. When is Joel coming to Malta for the collaboration video project? I'll get him here, one way or another, trust me. You have now 10,000 euros to spend on a printer. What do you buy? Probably an SLS printer. <laughs> no, Lars, I can't. <laughs> Any idea how to create a purse block with two extruders and one nozzle? Uh, splitter. There are nozzles with, uh, with a splitter inside. Hey, Deacon. That beep is another ping. What's with the loose white wires? Um, yes, I've, I've had this nozzle jam. Um, so I had to undo everything and I forgot to tie them back up. Chris, Joe, do you know what I know about what's going to be announced next week? Possibly. <laughs> And I'm very excited. <laughs> Printed solid. XYZ full color 3D printer. Yes, um, I actually saw it being announced. Um, it's, the only issue with that is it's still closed source. Knowing XYZ printing, it's closed source. So it's going to be exorbitantly expensive to buy filaments. But maybe that's where the Palette Plus will move forward to. Uh, in the future. What's the usage like for PVA filament? Um, it depends how much you're going to use from it. Marta's full kit. Yeah, that's that wouldn't be a bad idea. To be completely honest, Mike, I'm actually tempted to get another Prusa Mark II S myself. Hey, Satrap. Hey, call Joel Telling and tell him to join the stream. How you can shout him out on Twitter. He'll definitely join. Thank you, Ben. Can you shred on a ukulele? Oh, why? No. <laughs> Do you have other secret life besides 3D printing? Um, no, I'm just a normal family man. <laughs> hey, Nicholas. Have you started the FT5 build yet? Oh, no, I haven't, Deacon. I'm sorry. Are you going to TCT later this month? Yes, I am, and I'll be there on the 27th. And you can find me between 10 a.m. and 12 a.m. Uh, 12 p.m. on Hawk 3D Proto stand. Mike's Tech World. Who will announce something? Oh, someone's going to announce something. <laughs> In it eight, you mothered the heck out of it. Have you considered the AM8 version? I have, but to be completely honest, uh, what I'm about to do now is the AM8 won't exist for much longer because I'm going to change whatever is left of it uh, into something fully custom of my own. Sorry, I've heard that the Palette is launching a new version soon. Uh, Demons, this is the Palette Plus. This just launched. Not the palette. So this is the new version. If you know what I know, then I think we both know it's something to be very excited about. Yes, exactly. <laughs> can you get the palette plus in Europe? Yes, you can. Uh, I left a link in the video description for MVO Engineering. Uh, he's the distributor in the UK and he ships worldwide.
Patrick, I was actually more thinking of going for a couple of days to Prague and um, bring one down myself. Joe, um, what is the interesting spool holder you are using? For the Palette Plus? That's actually, I, uh, let me show you. So, um, this is the box of the Palette Plus. And with the Palette Plus, you get a rod, a metal rod, and two 3D printed parts. Sorry, weird camera angles. So you get two 3D printed parts and a metal rod. You open the top box and you just slide the 3D printed parts in. You put the metal rod in and it can hold up to about five spools in there or four large spools. And that is absolutely awesome. Cheap and effective. And for those of you wondering, see it's changing color, it's transitioning. Now, if you notice here, when there was no color change, the info was about 5%. That's my dilemma. At least ordering a Mark II, my second, now with free shipping and then ordering will add up the same financially. True, fair enough. If I didn't have 6K set aside for my car, I might grab Mark II, to be honest. <laughs> mm, free shipping on a or a trip to Prague and having a tour of the proofs factory and bringing back the printer yourself. Yeah, I know what I would do if I could. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Don. So the thing is, the only reason why I find it difficult to go to Prague at the moment is because on Tuesday I have to go to Germany for a job interview. Um, uh, and the week after that I have a wedding, the week after that there is TCT. So yeah, it's a bit hectic at the moment, plus I have a lot of things to do here. Describe a difficult situation or task that you had to deal with and how you did so. Is this an interview? <laughs> Describe yourself in three words. This is kind of fun. I know you're spamming me, but it's kind of fun. So i will say fun, fun, fun. Sorry, fun, fun, noob. <laughs> See, have you noticed the print has paused? Now it starts again. And now it should pause again in a few seconds. I did Deacon, um, but certain situations came up. Um, see, it's paused again. As soon as it starts moving, you're going to hear a beep. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, I had quit my job uh, in order to try and do this full time, but unfortunately something came up um, with many other things which I have shared with my Patreons. Um, so yeah, I will need to find um, a job uh, quickly, <laughs> but it should be okay. Prague, uh, <laughs> where to Germany? Munich, maybe? Um, actually, I'll be in Berlin. It's not my wedding, Karsten. I'm invited to a wedding. <laughs> so, yes, you can effectively um, recycle purge blocks. Actually, if you have a machine, uh, like the Philostruder, you can grind down the purge blocks and then make a really funky, awesome colored uh, filament. Yes, Miggy Man Mike, that is, life happened and it doesn't care about your plans. 
No problem, Joe. Pay for the expenses and I go to Bright to get you the printer. <laughs> Will you do a video on the new Tiva Tarantula with the extra upgrades? Possibly. I know that I should have a tornado coming soon. At Berlin, what date, time, street? <laughs> um, I'm going to be there from Tuesday till Saturday, but honestly speaking, I still have no idea where I'm going to be staying. Have you heard of Protocycler? No, I haven't, actually. Oh, this is going... So, just to give you an idea of what's happening here. So, as you can see here, it says there are 16 splices done of a possible 97. So, it still has quite a few ways to go. Now, we'll go to statistics and ping offsets. As you can see, they're very, very, very consistent. And that is actually a very good thing because it means that it's calibrated properly and there shouldn't be any issues with the print. If it wasn't calibrated properly or, there, or the filament is slipping or it's not printing properly, you see quite a big fluctuation. And from my experience, 2% uh, or up to 3% deviation, as long as it's consistent, um, it's a good print. Uh, anything over about 5, you'll have a failed print because color transition will not work properly. There you go. Report. There you go. <laughs> hey, John from Berlin too. Let's meet all for. Uh, <laughs> let me. Let me meet us all with. Actually, you know what? Um, I'll if I have an evening free, which I should. Um, I'll see if I can find a bar and I'll tweet out. So follow me on Twitter. I'll, um, I'll put out a tweet um, where I'll be staying, having a beer. And whoever is close by, come by. Such a tiny machine for the mosaic. <laughs> yes, Dustin, it is. It's... It's actually not that bad. It's 160 by 160 uh, by 160. Um, the only reason why I still use this machine is because it's really reliable and it really prints beautiful, beautiful prints. And I'll take reliability any day. Let me see if I can adjust a bit the gain so you guys can see better or at least the brightness. No, no. Maybe the exposure. No, no. Hold on. Let me see if I can adjust that. No, because then it's going to just stay doing that. Your bed was showing you 255 degrees? That's really not good. <laughs> Ismael, um, actually, you know what? Um, remind me, send me a message because I might have something for you. Because... <laughs> I've only been to Denmark once, actually. Oh, man, Joe, give us some notes. I'm in Austria, but I could come to Berlin for a beer. It just takes a while. Apologies. Yeah, 255 degrees, that's... Um, you're risking a fire there, man. Switch it off. 
Is that a Marvin? Yes, it is. Here, let me put this up here so you guys can see better. It's printing. Uh, do you subscribe to any Maker or 3D printing magazines? Yes, I'm actually subscribed to Make Magazine. So... So yeah, how many people are from Berlin here? Who'd be up to meet me next week? <laughs> so, ah uh, yeah, something else I need to point out that you can actually use more than four different colors in this because it does have a change filament function. Um, so if you notice that your filament is running out, um, you can actually change that spool. It has a function. However, um, um, you can also set a print. If you have a particular print that sort of transitions, you can actually add, just change the color halfway through the print when it's not using that color. And then it becomes a five color or six color print. <laughs> now, it probably doesn't count in 1985. I was like five years old back then. With the Planet Plus, if you wanted to print a multicolor cube, would you get a Marvin as a purge? Yeah, ex exactly. Think of it this way. You're all, all you want to do is print colorful blocks, and the purge is the model. <laughs> Sad part is if I was free. Uh, yes, city fights, yeah, <laughs> they're quite cheap. Morning, Andrew. Whereabouts in Australia? My mom lives in Australia, actually. She lives in Melbourne, in St. Albans, along with my brother and my nephew. I lived there for a year. Well, that was a very, very, very long time ago. Very long time ago. Why do my ASA come from the bed? Huh? Strictly speaking, you could have this machine. It's possible. It's complicated and difficult, but I'm sure it's possible to actually attach a multitude of daisy chains palette to each other. I thought that the palette was able to print without the block. Unfortunately, it's with a if you're Introducing a second material or a color with a single nozzle, it's almost impossible because it needs to purge. Any scratch builds in your future? Hypercube, Evolution, etc. Um, it's going to be the uh, Folder Tech FT5, actually. Uh, that's going to be probably my biggest print coming, uh, my biggest build. Awesome. Enjoy printing, man. <laughs> Noosa, Queensland. She would be about 2,500 kilometers south of me. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Karsten, it possibly could, 
Uh, but they would have to create the software for that and the hardware. And uh, however, they did create this. And this, once you understand how it works, it's absolutely mind blowing. Shit, so hrone. It came out great. Mine's work the same. It's not really about the printer, this printer, but I got the init A6 and configuring do it Wi Fi for it. Where are you in this project? So I received the two um, stepper motors with integrated lead screws. I have the do it Wi Fi with touchscreen. I have the Mark 42 bed. I have the Titan Aero. And all I have to do now is put it together. But before I do that, I have to do a video on how to install the BL Touch on the ANET. Joel, people were asking for you, man. <laughs> I uh, feel ignored, so it's said to share here. Thank you very much, man. How are you doing, Joel? going to work I'm guessing the only way not to have a purge block is to have a system with a rotating head with four nozzles that's one like for example the cell row box um, cell row box and also um, the Felix Pro dual head printer they have a system where the nozzle is actually flicked. It's moved on the side and stops the oozing completely. So it just moves out of the way on itself. About to catch a soccer game. Dude, I would love to say it's called football, but I know you guys call your football football. And we know that that's not football because it's a handball. <laughs> Have a good time, Joel. Derek, that's the uh, XYZ printer, the new one. Awesome. Joel sticks around for a bit more. So Joel, people want to know, when are you coming to Malta? We have Comic-Con. Uh, I think it's in December. Shall we make it happen? Hand egg. <laughs> It's hand odd shaped uh, pig skin. <laughs> what is your favorite printer? Uh, yeah, man, we have Comic Con in Malta. It's nothing compared to Comic Con you guys see. The best. Um, the, 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 the biggest celebrities we've had here were Face from the A-Team. <laughs> that was like two years ago or three years ago. That was like the big thing. <laughs> uh, uh, my favorite printer. Actually, I have... So I recycle my printers. I lend them out. I lend some to Magic Go. Um, my Prusa is... It's my baby. It's not going to go anywhere. I love using the Enervision. I love the Anacubic i3 Mega. The Dagoma Neva is being an absolute boss. My custom printer I'm loving. GTEC Giant Arm is really good. Sigma, I love it. So yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Of course he does Comic-Con. <laughs> and yes, it's still a bit hot and malt. It's about 25 degrees. Can you try out the Philostruder sometime in the future? I'd love to, to be honest. Everyone's on their end printer, and I have yet to get my MD work. Microdata to rework to print an upright spool holder. You're having, you're still having issues? Get in touch with them, man. Actually, Victor, funnily enough, um, it rained on the 7th September, and that was the first real rain of the year, of the wind, of the season. And it happened as well last year on our, on my wedding day. It started pouring down the second we walked out of the church. <laughs> Bell touch, that's done already. It's quite tricky with A6, but it's doable with help of Arduino. Good luck with the project and wait for an update. Actually, with Arduino, it's not that bad because they use the same... Um, okay, it's just installing maybe the wires, but there are ways around it. Um, but seeing as the ANET A8 and ANET A6 are both supported by Marlin now, so it's very, very easy to, uh, to integrate the BL Touch. Is regular printing on the Prusa just as good when using a single filament as it is using just one filament on the four-color upgrade? Yes, it is. Unless you do what I did yesterday um, and undo the bed to stick on a GoPro and forget to put the screw, then your print won't come as good. And you'll see that very soon in a video I'm doing soon about a functional print I did. Awesome. <laughs> Tell them I said hi, man. Yeah, Andrew, I, it's, it's 25 today because it rained yesterday, um, but it's still, what, 70, 80% humidity, so. <laughs> Karsten, um, 40 days over 25 degrees. Actually, this year we had 25 days over 40 degrees. <laughs> now, I actually didn't see deterioration, honestly speaking, in, in single mode. I'm being completely honest here. I do see a slight deterioration of quality if it's printing all four colors, but not really when it uses one. I'm doing fine, 3DP Iceland. How about you? Ads ah, the Rover 4D. Um, yeah, the Rover 4D has... I spoke to them about almost a year ago, actually. It's about $8,000, or it was, and it was on Kickstarter. Um, so, I don't know how it's still on Kickstarter. Ooh, make her for Rome. How about we meet in Rome, Joel? Actually, I'm going to be in Rome in November as well. I don't mind going in December as well. Ooh, but man, Rome to Malta, that's like an hour's flight, man. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, Joel. I'd love to. I'd really love to. But as... as I, at the moment, I can't. I really can't. I'd love to. I really would. In fact, I was thinking of possibly maybe going to Prague for a day or two just to uh, go see Joel's factory instead. Hey, you never know. Maybe, maybe I'll, uh, I'll get a sponsor to send me over one day. <laughs> Right. 
We have four seasons, wet and very wet, hot and damn hot. <laughs> So there you go, Chris. Go for it. it. It is just an hour. It actually, it takes me one day by bike. If I had to grab a ferry in the morning, go to Sicily, grab another ferry to Italy, and then drive all the way up to Rome, it would take me a day to get there. Joel, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. I really, really do, man. There is really no need. Uh, hopefully next year. Hopefully next year. Um, I'd really love to because I know everyone's going to be there and it will be awesome. And I love New York. I absolutely love New York. I also love New York because there is Carmelo Nazario there. And I love Carmelo. <laughs> She Joel, then the old lady were in the upper peninsula last month and she got a break from her lake running on day two. Michigan was pretty. <laughs> this printer is the Enervision EV160. Take my place, it's expensive. <laughs> Carmelo, my sweaty buddy. <laughs> Let, let's meet up. <laughs> Can you set up a print so that when the nozzle purges the previous color, it actually prints something with the purge filament that you don't care too much what it looks like? Um, I actually recorded a video today, which I will release on Monday, about that topic. You can, but you would still need a purge block. Um, because some parts of the second model might not have enough space to do a full purge of the nozzle. Awesome, Joel. Joel, you, you know, but just in case, or my, whatever you need, if you need any help, please, please, please let me know. Uh, we can also Skype, video chat, and whatever help you need, I'm there. Okay, so I'm going to depart. So we have a Marvin on the left. What's on the right? The right is a purge block. Steve. <laughs> Joel, if I can suggest, um, try using, I, I've had a lot of success on the CR10, um, but having it on a, a direct drive um, printer, a direct extruder printer, and also a printer where you can do small adjustments manually, that helps a lot. I can change colors just by pressing pause print on my Wanhao. Of course, I can do it with any printer. Uh, you just pause it and change filament. But imagine having to pause the printer 1,650 times to print a Marvin. <laughs> Exactly, I'm just printing a block and the Marvin is the purge. <laughs> Actually, while it looks big, uh, the infill is, um, is not that dense. Um, so as I was saying, let me just move this back a bit. So this is the purge block of the Prusa i3 Mark IIS. And this 
is the purge block for a print done on uh, the uh, Creality CR10. Both are done for Marvin and both weigh the same amount. They're both 20 gram purge blocks. The difference is this is about 50% or slightly less infill. This is about 100% infill. Ooh, G-Max. Yes, Victor, I agree. I actually spoke to Joel about Pastizzi when we were in, um, in, in, uh, at Matter Hackers. We spoke about Pastizzi and I told him about them. Yeah, the purge block on the G-Max would be awesome. <laughs> you'd, you'd be, put it this way, whatever you print, which is G-Max size, you'll instantly get a leg for a stool. So you just print four things, you have four legs. Then all you just need is to print the top part. I still say you need to make a tabletop from purge box. Oh yes, I, I'm sure I'll find something to do um, with, with the purge box. I'm quite sure of it. I just, I have an idea, but I have to figure it out. Let me see if I can fix this a bit. Uh, it doesn't look that good. Nah. Nope. I don't like it like that. Ooh. Come on. There you go. So leave it back like that. It's not hurting anyone. Imagine the purge on a Delta Wasp. <laughs> Can you set the info density differently on model and purge block to save space? Um, yes, you can actually. How about two palettes feeding the N2 plus? Actually, how about four palettes feeding the Prusa? <laughs> Multi-material upgrade. <laughs> I put back because I have you to run. Yeah, but it's the way it is with YouTube. What if you purge the material for the infill instead of the purge book? Uh, Florian, you can. However, at certain parts of the print, uh, there might not be enough space to purge enough as an infill. So you might still need a purge block. Granted, you might need a smaller purge block, but... Um, Lucid, um, wouldn't the purge block be the same size as any other? You're still only purging the same amount per layer. Uh, yes, but that applies if you're printing one Marvin or a hundred Marvins, then the purge block will be the same size. Hey, Capel, I'll be in Germany next week. I'll be in Berlin. <laughs> Hey, Pink Mouse. Yeah, they are. <laughs> what is the purge block for? Uh, the purge block is to transition from one color ooh, to another. 
all of a sudden, hold on, let me just fix this because all of a sudden it's really washed out. And I really don't like this. So. Ah, that's why. That's why. See, there. See? Much better to see. Actually, maybe I can, hold on. There. That's more like it. What I'm saying is the purge block on the Prusa would be the same size as GMAX print. Um, as a footprint, yes. However, if you print something at 50 centimeters, it's going to be 50 centimeters. <laughs> Sorry about dropping off. No worries. No worries, Carmelo. Thank you very much, man, for coming in. What is the Paris vlog? Just a big waste of filament? Um, yes and no. Um, I'm sure there are ways I can find use for a Paris block. However, if you want to print in multi-material with a single nozzle, the purge has to happen. If you have a single nozzle, you will have a purge block. Um, you can calibrate it almost perfectly and have a very small purge block, but it has to clean the nozzle. It has to clean the nozzle from the previous filament. Do you have an affiliate link for Magic Go? Um, no, I don't. Um, if you find it on Amazon, you can use my affiliate links on Amazon. But to be completely honest, um, I just want Magic Go to do well. It's a Maltese company. I'm a bit patriotic. I'm very proud of them. So yeah. Plus, I have my Magic Goos here. <laughs> exactly, Andrew. Uh, that's actually a very good point because multi-material or multi-color printing is is very good for people who want to run production so for example let's say uh keychains like this let me see if i can do it like this whoop like this keychain right here so if ooh, so if you want to print maybe 20 or 30 multicolored keychains like this um then you you'll have pretty much very little purge, uh, very little waste. Good evening, Steve. Purge blocks for children's furniture. That's actually an idea I'm trying to figure out how to work. <laughs> Does the palette support printing from just one spool and when it runs out, splice a second spool and continue doing big prints one spool after the other? Yes, it does. It actually does. Magic Goo is run by some incredible, wonderful people. I completely and wholeheartedly agree, Joel. Is that another purge block on the doorstep? No, I don't think so. What doorstep? <laughs> Although I do have about two and a half kilos of purge blocks, so they're running around everywhere. Goo tester. <laughs> yeah, if only. Hey Joe, just joined that I'm going I'm going Malta in October. I hope to see you there. How's your day? Robbie, awesome man. October is actually not a bad time to be a Malta. It's not hot, it's not cold, it's just right. Um, and my day is going absolutely great so far.
Thanks, Joel. Thank you very much, man. Have a good day and have fun. And I hope the team you're supporting wins. Doorstop, Joel. I mean, I could use it as a doorstop. Ah, off door. Ah, that's why. Is, is that another purge block or doorstop? It's a purge block. <laughs> yes, he did. Actually, um, Dustin, I actually spoke to Dustin about this because I didn't want to seem like I'm trying to copy him, so I got his permission first. Um, but now that I have the Palette Plus and I've been collecting some specimen of purges and everything, I felt that was the right time um, to, to do a video on it. But yes, Dustin summed up purge blogs very, very well. Joe, can you recycle the purge blocks into RPLA or RPUTG? You technically could. You just have to break them down and run them through a filament maker. Agreed, counterpoint. I actually really, really like this, um, uh, this keychain. It's really nice. As a way not to have a purge block. With a single nozzle, very difficult. All actually impossible, I think. What is a purge block? A purge block is the box that is printing next to the Marvin. How long will the print take? The print will... I'm quite sure it's going to take at least another hour, so I doubt you guys will be able to see this finish. <laughs> Possibly another two hours. It's been printing for an hour now. Have a good night, Seacroft. Thank you very much for coming in, man. Is it possible to print one nozzle multi-material with Kura? Yes, of course, it is. Could you see it as a trade-off between... It? I, honestly speaking, I really, really... I, I know this is going to sound weird, but I don't see it as a waste just yet. Uh, because there are so many things you can still do with it. Um, it is a waste if you're just going to throw it away. But if you can find a way, even if it's just breaking it down, recycling into new filament, then it's not really a waste. But I'm quite sure I can find something fun to do with it. I just have to be a bit creative. Yes, the yellow is just used for the outer shell. Uh, the pink will be uh, the inner, the face. So, let's do this. Put the user in timeout. But Andrew, when you use a CNC, wouldn't, wouldn't the friction just melt the, um, the plastic? Steve, the purpose of a purge block is to clean the nozzle from the other filament because it's printing in two colors. So once it finishes printing one color, it purges filament so that the second filament starts coming out clean and when it's done, it moves on to the print and just keeps going back and forth. Yes, pink mouse, that's it. At the worst, I think the purge book is more like a cost than a waste. It's a trade-off and a necessity. And yes, it is a cost. And it's part of the multicolor, multi-material process. Um, it looks like it is, but yeah, it'll be fine. Hopefully. But thankfully, you know, I have to remember to actually sort it out. 
No, we need a one minute video each week of 3D model of the week to show off new models you find and like. Inspire people to print. I only printed like one thing this week. Okay, I will do that actually. Uh, I want to start doing that. I really, really do. And to be honest, actually, um, there is a designer, Phantasmograph, um, something like that. And I've been printing a lot of his models. Um, hold on, sorry, I'm going to just move this a bit. Ooh, okay, now, now I cannot see anything. So this is one of them. Absolutely awesome. He designs things that do not require support. And I'm printing all of his models right now. It's a funny shape. It's true, exactly. It's a funny shape, Prisbo. It almost looks like a Marvin. <laughs> what time is it in Malta? It is 20 to midnight. Spotty dog things, Joe. I'm not thick, really. But I make Forrest Gump look intelligent. <laughs> Please don't apologize, man. No need. If I didn't really explain everything that I do, then what's the point of me having a channel? <laughs> exactly, Morel. I completely agree. Yeah, I know. I know, Turin Karin. Sorry, man. It's just been hectic. How much more time does the block add? Uh, quite a lot, actually. About three times the time, usually. Easy. What do you do with all the models you print? Uh, usually, my daughter steals them, and then my wife takes them from her room, puts them in bags, and throws them in the garage. <laughs> Yes, Miggy Man Mike, I completely agree that some of the purge, yes, it could go as an info. However, for example, in this case, it's not going to make much difference because the print is actually fairly small. Have a good night, Karsten. Thank you very much for coming in, man. Uh, Papatek, please be safe, man. Um, Thank you very much for coming by, dude. I hope you guys do well. Um, we're, we're your, all of you guys are in our thoughts, man. So with this printer filled, prints are even more traumatic. Yes, uh, Steve, yes, they're much more traumatic. And what's even more traumatic than that is when you have someone like me who's very persistent and tenacious and you try a print at least 10 times and it fails about 60% of the way through and you waste over a kilo and a half of filament. <laughs> yeah, very traumatic. <laughs> yeah, she does. Actually, she's coming here. She almost comes in here every single day now and tells me, have you recorded a video on that model yet? She just asked me that in terms of, because if you're done recording, does that mean now I can have it? <laughs> I would buy an autograph to make her a new fridge block. I wouldn't sell them. I would give them away. <laughs> But Steve, yes, actually, I could sell them and give them away to charity. That's very good. Joe, you ever make any drones? No, I haven't made one yet. Um, I'm thinking of getting the Karma, um, the GoPro Karma.
what got you into 3D printing and YouTube? Um, what got me into 3D printing was curiosity. Um, a couple of years ago, I invested in the Peachy 3D printer and stuff like that fascinates me. Technology, science, everything fascinates me. I love to see things, how they work and experiment. So it was only natural for me. YouTube, it was just an idea. It was just me trying to document a journey and somehow it ended up here <laughs> with 14,000 subscribers. <laughs> Pink mouse, yes. If you're just printing in different colors, yes, you could do an awesome paint job. Um, however, if it's a multi-material, paint is, would be redundant in that case. Because if you want to print something with flexible and, and PLA or flexible and PETG, then you'd need the purge block with a single nozzle. Get the Mavic Pro, not the Karma. Interesting. She is seven, Andrew. Uh, why does the printer stop sometimes? So what's happening is that the G code itself does pauses. And when it does two of those pauses after each other, you will then hear a beep. And that, pe that beep is the palette um, receiving a ping. So what's happening is when it pauses, no filament is going through the encoder wheel. Um, uh, and the palette knows that at that certain specific ping, the printer should be in a certain specific place and the filament used should be a certain specific amount. And that ping will turn the printer if it's on a spot, uh, if it's ahead, if it's behind, and it readjusts the splicing. Get the Mavic Pro. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that, Steve. But yes, I have to admit, there is something therapeutic um, about 3D printing, about watching something print. It's not the first time I've spent over an hour just sitting watching a print happen. It's actually not the printer that is smart, it's the palette that is, it's actually, it's a genius. The engineering that goes into this machine is incredible, absolutely incredible. Oh, I miss watching your printer. Watch, you know, there, you can watch this one. <laughs> I have to admit though, when I'm away for a few days, I really miss 3D printing. So I'm having trouble printing PVA on my multi-material upgrade on the Prusiny tips. What kind of trouble? Do you recommend SLA to some that has the Anit A8 and GTEC beginner or should I wait? Honestly speaking, I have not tried SLA yet. I will be trying one very soon. Um, so I, I really wouldn't know. Um, SLA I think is good, very good for miniatures but it might be a bit expensive to print large things, especially. So, uh, what's the price tag on that machine? On the, the, um, the Palette Plus is about, I think it's about $800. Um, it's about 800 sterling as well. How much difference have you noticed between various brands of PLA? So far, I have only tried a couple of brands. Once, 
one was twice as much as the other. Print quality was the same. So, I actually received some cheap 3D printer filaments from GearBest to review because it was requested quite a lot. It cost about 14 euros a spool per kilo. <clears throat> and I've printed a couple of little things. I can see some difference in some brands and others no. Um, the main difference is not how easy it prints or, or how well it, it bonds together, but it's more on the finish. Um, so for example, rigid ink, um, filamentive, filamentum, especially filamentum, when you print something, um, the layers tend to be really nice. They're, they're really evenly laid out. It looks beautiful. Some other prints, they're very unforgiving. So if there is a small mistake in the print, it will show up very quickly. Nothing either. Uh, have a cup, gave a cup, Scott, a Benchy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My daughter already ordered 30 um, um, fidget spinners for her class. But now what's going to happen is, um, you guys probably remember the Dagoma Neva 3D printer, the Tap Tap Delta. So that was a review unit, uh, which I'm supposed to send back, um, well, next week or the week after. However, the Goma have reached out to me and um, they gave that printer as a gift to my daughter. Not me, my daughter. She was very, very, very happy about it. So now she can start printing her own things. So Rigid Ink works extremely well with their own PVA. They have very good PVA. Scaffold, it works well, but it doesn't adhere well on purpose um, to some prints, so to some materials. I actually have a Tronc CX3 as well. Uh, what I can tell you is take your time with the kit. It's not an easy kit to put together. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, lots of missing information. You might find a few missing screws, but take your time. Nope, sorry if I'm missing something basic here. Can you print with more than one color on the same layer? Yes, of course, you can print up to four. This is in fact printing two colors at the moment on the same layer. Hi ho. What's my opinion on the Tronxy? Um, if I have to be completely honest, and this will come out, this I will say this during my review, because I have the Tronxy X3 and the Tronxy X3S, uh, which is the size of the Creality CR10. Um, they are decent printers. Um, print quality is actually not bad at all. As a kit, just purely looking at it from a kit point of view, it's probably one of the worst kits you can put together. Uh, instructions are incomplete. Um, some parts of the instructions have the incorrect information. You might find some missing parts, some missing screws. It will ask you to use screws which do not come with the kit. So, yeah, it's just, that, it's just the way it is. Okay, so now she will say, how, that, how do I do this 100 times a day? Actually, Andrew, um, the Dagoma is actually very good because all you do is remove the print and press a button and it starts printing again. Do you design your own models or will you ever design your own models? Probably I will, but not organic shapes. I started designing some functional prints, but not organic as in models, as in pretty fluid models. How does the dragons print? Which dragons? What settings did you use just out of our interest? This is printing at uh, 200 micron layers, um, 200 degrees on the nozzle, and 50 degrees on the heat bed.
Ah, the extra S. Yes. Um, so, yes. Oh, nuts. Yes. Uh, now the nuts. <laughs> so, Trunksy have this really bad habit, and I mean really bad habit, of grabbing all the nuts and bolts and screws and everything and throwing them in one bag. And then you have to sort them out yourself. With the Trunksy X3S, they've actually improved a little bit. Now you have a bag with all the M3 screws in it, you have, even though there are five or six different types. A bag with all the M4 screws in it. Um, also, make sure you get yourself some uh, T-nuts, um, because you might not have enough in the bag. And some of them might not be of the best quality, and they might um, just uh, shear off. Piotr, yes, but keep in mind that the Palette Plus can be used on any printer. So even if you upgrade a printer, eventually you can still use the Palette Plus. <coughs> um, the Dagoma Niva is, I think it's about 400 euros. Is there a cheap printer kit that can print dissolvable support without such a huge... I mean... The cheapest I can think of is probably the Tivo Durantula, uh, the dual nozzle. Um, there are many printer kits, Chinese printer kits with dual nozzles. Um, maybe they don't require such a big purge block um, because they're dual nozzles, not single nozzle. Is the purge block size adjustable? Uh, yes, it is actually. Um, once you've calibrated the printer fully, I have not calibrated this fully yet, you can actually change the transition length. Um, this is set to 11 centimeters of transition um, uh, length. It can be brought down to 8 centimeters. Um, and no, because they're not hitting. So, not entirely concerned at the moment yet. <laughs> if it catches fire, then I'll be very concerned. Uh, but it, it will hang on. Don't worry, Florian. Thank you very much for your thought, man. Don't worry about it. Everything you said reminds me of the Folger deck. Bag of instructions, all screws in one bag, missing parts, no part cooling fan, and any other printers, but I still love them. I'm still scared of opening my folder tick. <laughs> Great, I can see that going out the window then. <laughs> hey Joe, did you try the new edition of the CR10? Uh, not yet. Um, I should have one coming in soon. Hey 3D Kid. Um, Oh man, explaining this again. Um, actually, it's much easier because I, I started explaining how it works in the beginning of the video so people will know, well, won't have to wait. So ideally, you can check in the beginning, but basically the rundown is you have the Palette Plus, which takes four filaments. It splices them into one single strand and you can print up with up to four colors or materials with single nozzle printer, any printer, even your tarantula. Ah, on the scaffold, um, just simple 215 degrees on the nozzle. That, that was basically it. I think it's about 50 millimeters a second. <laughs> GR53, <laughs> maybe it's a code. Yes, Chris, um, make sure you check them out. How much was it? Uh, how much was my daughter's 3D printer? It was, it was sent to me by Neva for review and they gave it to her as a gift, but it costs about $400. Are 
Are you going to do a video on the Tivo Tarantula with the upgrades? Yes, I will. Kofefe. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> So, I'm just going to go check the pings a little bit, see how they're doing. So, we are at 39 splices out of 97. So, we're not even halfway through and it's been 1 hour and 30 minutes. So, we're going to go to statistics, ping offsets. And they're actually quite consistent. So, not even 1% of fluctuation, possibly... Yep, just under 1%, and that is perfect to me. Pong offsets. Almost flawless. See, you can check the filament used. Oh, sorry. Um, so drive 1, we have 3 meters. Drive 2, we have 2.47 meters. And here, you can also change filament. Ugh. Cancel print, preferences, system info, and back. So there. Come on. Ugh. There we go. No worries, up. Is it a kit? No, it comes fully assembled. Wish these printers would tell you the approximate time left instead of the percentage done. You can look and see what is done. Um, so, I... Um, so currently it's at, if I, if I look here, I can see that it's at 41, uh, so it's 41.8%. So at least I have an idea of how long there is left. Why can't I have this straight? Oh, Victor, there's 40 likes. <laughs> Actually, it's funny because uh, even before the live stream started, I already had a, a dislike. I had a dislike and two likes. So, yeah, trolls. Joe, I've got to bug out as I'm at work, but thanks for doing these videos. I find them really helpful. Stay low, move fast, my friend. Thank you very much, Steve. Have a good day, buddy. Or a good evening. <laughs> now, Neva is not a kid. It comes completely assembled. All you have to do is put the arms of the effector and they stick on by magnets, and that's it. You just load some filament, press a button, and you start printing. What is the official language spoken in Malta? Greek? No, it's Maltese. In Greece, they speak Greek. Malta, we speak Maltese. Well, even the dislikes kind of of your channel. What do you mean? Imagination to form? Sorry, I didn't understand that. Hey, Brenton. Good evening. Yeah, Victor, yeah, sometimes we do speak in Greek. <laughs> I think sometimes we speak in Chinese as well, because we don't understand each other. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Palette Plus? So, 
I actually, I think it's one of the most mind-blowing machines um, that I've ever seen. The amount of engineering that's gone into this machine is absolutely insane. Um, I think that the people behind um, the Palette Plus, um, and I've spoken to a few of them, there is Brennan, there is uh, Derek, I think his name is. They're some of the most nice, down-to-earth guys I've ever talked to. Um, Brennan also um, Skypes me and FaceTimes me, even for any reason, just to see how's it going, if I need anything. And they do it with everyone. They're always available. And it's absolutely awesome to have that kind of support from a company. Plus, the machine works. <laughs> and it works very well. Subbed a few days ago and really enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Lee Young, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Maltese is closer to Arabic. Yes, yes, it is. Oh, man, thank you very much for the tip. Oh, 74159693QAZSXC. <laughs> Keep up the good work, Matt. Thank you very much, Matt. I truly, truly appreciate it, man. So, do you all live on Maltesers? <laughs> Actually, we don't like them. Well, they give YouTube more impressions on your channel. Yeah, true. Ni hao. Ni hao ma. <laughs> Actually, Florian is the second donation. A lot of people speak rubbish. Yes, they do. Very much so. <laughs> so what is the palette? What is the plus over the normal palette? So with the palette, um, the onboarding process, the calibration process was quite complicated and tedious while it still worked. And it could only print PLA, nothing else. It could only use PLA, four different colors of PLA, plus the splices, which are, hold on which are this part here of the filament. They used to break down very easily. So the Palette Plus is a much better way of splicing the filament. So as you can see, it's much more strong. It splices different materials. Um, so it's not just PLA anymore. You can do PETG, you can do PVA, um, PLA. So you can mix and match. And they made everything much more easy. The calibration process has become much easier. The integration to simplify 3D is much easier. And it's cheaper. Uh, no worries. No worries, Dark Man. You guys are absolutely awesome. Hey, Joe, are you going to make a free view of the Dagoma Niva? Yes, um, it should be out. Actually, this was printed on the Dagoma Niva. Uh, this thing is, it came out awesome. Um, so I'm really, really happy with the results. And I've been printing night and day for the past two weeks with it. Um, so expect the review to be out within a week or so. And which do you like better, the Prusa Multimaterial or the Palette Plus? Um, I like them both because I can print two things at the same time. <laughs> I really don't have any preference because they work well for what they are. I, to be completely honest, maybe the Palette Plus has a bit of an edge because I can just move it around from printer to printer. Um, um, but, uh, but yeah, the Prusa is... Possibly, it's a closed-loop system, so there is no room for error there. <laughs> what do you think, what the next step, what's the next step? You think 3D printing needs, and what do you think about 4D printing? Apparently, that's a thing. Yeah, I think even 5D printing is becoming a thing now. Um, I think XYZ printing have the right idea and I think that will possibly be the way forward because 
there's only so many nozzles you can put on a printer or so many extruders or so many inputs on a Palette Plus. <laughs> so I think the way forward is the Palette Plus or something like the Palette Plus and uh, Mosaic, mosaic um, if you're doing this, remember, I'm giving you the idea here. But having an open loop system of a single color which can be tainted with ink as it goes through and changes color. And that way you have um, a full spectrum of color. There are 10 types of people, those that understand binary and those that don't. <laughs> Two, one, zero. I'm interested in printing with belts for printing surfaces. What about flexible filament splicing? Um, so, uh, actually, you know what? Let me do this. Much easier to show and much better. So, PVA, flexible. And I'm actually pulling really hard. <laughs> so, it splices really well. And if I can show you, like for example, this. If you notice, sorry, hold on. There is actually almost no difference in diameter, like visible. Now with the palette, the original palette, there was a bit of difference in diameter. Um, so it might, I've had cases where it could possibly clog the nozzle on this printer, um, but this hasn't happened yet. And I've, I think I've used this for at least a hundred hours so far. No, you are busy, but still hoping for the one how video. I know, I know, man. It should be coming soon. I just have to find time. Thank you very much, man. S3K7 and 5. Thank you. I just want to print it that works. Not like the Eagle Moss V3 3D. Wow. Never heard of it, actually. Oh, you, 3DP Iceland, you know what you should use? I'm going to do a video about it. I actually recorded it today. It should be uploading next week. Um, the Form Futura R Titan X, the Reform R Titan X. Absolutely amazing ABS filament. It's recycled. Um, it does not warp at all, and it, it prints beautifully. <laughs> flexible and PLA is but yeah it's uh, TPU and they've also managed to print Ninja Flex which I will be testing as well I just have to print a few additional parts because the Palette Plus constantly evolves um, and they're constantly working on it and there are a few better users out there me being one of them um, and we're constantly giving feedback on what could be improved and the Mosaic team just gets on it and starts experimenting and upgrading and then they just send us files print this replace this and it should be fine with auto level heat bed daddy decks yes you do um but once again it's as i said so let's say you want to upgrade the Prusa and you get a bigger printer. You can't have multi-material on that. However, on this, you can move it from one printer to the other. The difference is, this is not, how can I say it? It's not really about cost because ultimately you can buy a Palette Plus and buy an Anet A8, um, put all kinds of mods on it to make it a safe, reliable, good printer with lots of features, and it's still be about the same. So the print quality of the Palette Plus is only as good as the printer you're using to print with. For printers with small beds, but the ability to move the head of the build plate, would the Palette support a purge bucket? 
Yes, it does. Actually, it has a feature I can actually show you. So, let me see if I can, uh, hold on, let me just move that there. So, um, if you go on settings and printer profiles, and let me add this one just in case. So you have the printer and there is a part, uh, independent axes, refer, base model, none, dimensions. This is pauses for things, palette, transitions. Now it's not here. So when you're setting up a, uh, a printer, you can actually tell it to rather than print on a purge block, to print on, um, uh, to move the bed at the side of, or an empty space in the build area. And it just drops filament there. Um, so what you can do is sort out a way to have a purge block or a purge bucket, sorry, uh, the same way the Sigma does and have it always purge in there. Brenton, I completely agree. What happens if using different materials with different nozzle temperatures, PLA, TPU? Um, it's still going to work because what's going to happen is while it's purging, the printer will start fluctuating the temperature of the nozzle. Um, so while it's purging, it's just adjusting the temperature. And by the time it's printing it, it should be fine. It only takes, what, a few seconds uh, to go up maybe 5, 10 degrees or down 5, 10 degrees. Ever chin. Um, if the thing is, if you have a printer that is not a direct drive, you can still use it um, and it will still print. Now, keep in mind, there is an advantage of having um, a spliced TPU or flexible filament, even with a Bowden, because it's not the whole flex, it's not the whole filament thread that's going to be flexible, it's just sections of it, making the filament much stronger. Joe, do you prefer Bowden or Direct? I like Bowden more speed. To be completely honest, I'm unbiased. Um, I don't mind either. I've had very good results with both. Thank you very much, Chris, for that. And me, it is a purge block. Um, it just looks very big in terms of weight. Um, uh, it's, I think it's, it's going to be about 20 grams. So... Let me see. So you guys went all quiet. Everyone's still there? My point is running Palette Plus over Direct Drive allows sharper and cleaner prints over about it. No, no, completely agree. But then again, keep in mind that the prints, the print quality, and that's the thing with the Palette Plus, the print quality will depend always on the printer. So it's always going to be as good as the printer can print. So the Palette does not have any effect whatsoever on the print quality. Did you make the Marvin 2 color with what you showed in Mesh Mixer? No, I haven't, Imagination, but it was already pre-sliced um, on uh, Thingiverse. Good evening, Valandar. Yep, 
Yes, we did 3DP Iceland. I mentioned uh, because I, um, I had been recording one, uh, which was, should be released on Monday, and I actually spoke to Dustin about it as well. <laughs> Besides by the purge one. Uh, Javier, um, it, it, it can and it can, because if you use another model, you might still need a purge mug because the second model might not have enough space or surface area to do a full purge of two colors or three if that's what's needed yeah it's not it's a couple of millimeters over the print is just a cable but it's fine it's not touching it's been printing like that for hours now That purge block could be another Marvin. It could be many other Marvins, actually. So, Joe, what is your favorite pink filament? I have to say that one of the nicest pinks I've seen is by far uh, Color Fab pink. Um, it's a really, really beautiful kind of pink. Yeah, it's just the perspective of the camera, the way it is. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. There, because it's bugging me on the side. So, if the model is 2 grams and the purge block is 20 grams, then that's another 10 Marvins. Yes, in this case it is. However, to give you an idea... Um, wait. I actually don't have it here. So, the purge block for the, um, uh, the Iron Man here, um, I think it weighs about 1.5 times the model. Um, it all depends on how many colors you use on the model. Then there is the size of the model you print, the infill. Um, so you can't really calculate like all purge blocks weigh 10 times more than the print. It doesn't work that way. It all depends on the amount of colors you print, the size of the print, the properties of the print. Joe, do you recommend any metal fill filaments over uh, the others? Um, the two filaments I've used are copper fill from Color Fab and steel fill from Color Fab. <laughs> I got here. What machine is doing the actual printing? It's an Enervision EV160. My humble experience quality mostly depends on mechanical parts and hardware. If it is a kit, a good build, electronic extruders are secondary. Oh no, I completely agree. Um, the quality of a print always, it, it's based on its weakest link. Um, so if you have a weak frame, then it's, you might get Z-banding or movement. Um, so yeah, extruders and all that, they work. The extruders will make a difference in filament. Um, nozzles will make a difference in texture of the filament that comes out. But ultimately, precision is for um, is, is with uh, the board and the frame. <laughs> Tony, hold on, let's see if I can just move it up. There. Maybe people will stop talking to me about it. <laughs> Happy? <laughs> Will you go to Birmingham for 3D Printing Fest next year? Next year? I had no idea there was a 3D Printing Fest. It's 
Someone should invest a nozzle cleaning filament to try and reduce purge needed. Um, but the thing is, you'd still then need to purge the nozzle cleaning filament for the new filament. So, and you still have to pay for the nozzle cleaning filament. And it might be much more expensive than the actual filament. So, a single multicolor marvin on the bed would be just about the worst possible case purge book wise. Yes, exactly. So, this is one of those cases where you really don't want to print what I'm doing right now because it's not feasible. But these are keychains, and if I wanted to print 20 of these, then, then it's worth it because the purge block will still be the same size. <laughs> TCT, I'm going to be there this year. So, let me show you guys how this is coming along. The good thing is that it's clean. It's very, very clean. You have no bleeding of colors and it's almost flawless. Why does it keep doing this? Have you tried the Raspberry Pi Octoprint on the Prusa yet? Not on the Prusa. I've used Astroprint on the Kaleido Compact, but not the Prusa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it actually is. They do go well together. Um, just as an FYI, in terms of um, uh, materials, we're using color fab yellow PLA PHA, and the pink is from extrude.limited. Extrude Limited, by the way, um, has a tendency to have very cheap filaments. They do a lot of sales. Um, I think I bought mine for around 8 euros per spool. It was on sale. They were doing a clear out sale. The only thing is that the spools are the spools are quite weak, so I received a few which were broken. So I might get a few snags at some point. Um, and the filament is quite unforgiving, uh, but it prints well. So I'll probably buy a few more spools. If you do, I'd love to see it. I will, I promise I will actually do because I know it's something that would be very useful to many. <laughs> Second Prusa with a multi material upgrade. Iron Astroprint on the Prusa works for you. Astroprint is much more user friendly, I have to admit, um, which is why I used it on the Kalido Compact. Just doesn't have that much flexibility as the Octoprint does. No, it's actually the same speed. Uh, it only changes the speed on the um, on the parameters. <laughs> Imagination to form. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> No, it's not. Um, 
The only time it would be 100% infill is if it was a four color print all the way through. A hundred percent infill on a it's a bit difficult to have something at a hundred percent because it has to start with four colors at the bottom and go four colors all the way up so unless it's a vase like a twisting vase let it hang <laughs> One, two, three, three D and L. Nice. So also, um, yes, I have links in the video description if you want decent filament. Um, it's called Azure Film. Um, they're very cheap. They're, I think, less than 20 euros or somewhere around 20 euros per spool. Plus, I think there's a, I'm not sure if it's a 15 or a 20% discount code there. It's not an affiliate link, so I'm not trying to sell you uh, filament. Um, it's not an affiliate link. I don't make any money. Uh, the discount code is just there for you guys. They actually have some decent filaments. Um, PETG is very easy to use. I used their PETG for the TiVo Tarantula review. I did that big vase. Um, the only issue, I'll be doing a review shortly because they've been nagging me. They sent me a few spools to test out and now they're just pushing me to do a review. So unfortunately, I didn't have time to use the ABS and they asked for it, so they'll have it. But I have to give it to them. The filament is actually quite good. The spools, on the other hand, not very happy with. In order to do cost cuttings, the sides of the spools have huge holes like circles. So they make the sides very flexible. What is the difference between a purge block and a purge bucket? Uh, so the purge block prints as this is doing right now. A purge bucket is literally a bucket that sits on the side of a printer where the nozzle just goes on top of it. It purges filament inside and then wipes itself as it's leaving, like the Sigma have. Yeah, Touring Current, I have to admit that that happened to me as well. As soon as I see it pause, I look at the print and I say, has it frozen? <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Is it possible to use something like the Palette Plus in vase mode without purge if you are happy to live with transition? Yes, of course. Like, for example, um, I wonder, I don't know if this was printed. No, this was not printed like that. Uh, but yes, you could. You literally could set up the palette to transition colors. Um, ultimately, all it's just going to do is just push filament through. Um, and the, uh, the printer will just keep, you just print a normal vase. As a matter of fact, I have, obviously, if, let's say, the print fails, I'm going to stop the printer. And the filament that I have in the PTFE tube right now, um, from the um, extruder all the way to uh, the Palette Plus, would basically go to waste. So I have been collecting those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print a vase, and I'm just going to throw everything inside the, uh, the Prusa i3 Mark II S, and just let it transition by itself on the filament. So I will use that filament. So has Mosaic got a little utility that you can use the splice filament to make your own graduated filament? Actually, honestly speaking, and maybe if Derek is still here, he can answer this question. They have this feature where you can do stuff like this. For those of you who recognize this, this is the twisty, twisty vase from Devon of Make Anything. And this transition here is a feature of Chroma. But I haven't found where it is, and I really want to try it out. <laughs> mm. 
The palette plus works with wood filament. Strictly speaking, Topi, I don't see an issue with that simply because wood filament is actually PLA um, with particles in it. And I don't think there should be an issue. But if Derek is still here from Mosaic, he can possibly answer that better than I can. Um, because ultimately it's PLA. So it works with PVA and TPU. And it will adhere well with other PLA because it's still PLA. And it shouldn't clog anything in, um, in the Palette Plus. So it's just a matter of the nozzle. Um, ooh, nice. So shall we, shall we, shall we try it out? <laughs> Let, let's see if we can try it out. I haven't tried it yet, so let's see if we can try it out. So tools, tools, custom stuff. Ooh, nice. Okay. So random end of spool. Can do a pattern. And the gradient. Oh man, I'm I I'm I still need to play with these. <laughs> oh, I still need to play with these. Oh, this changes everything. So basically I can just, do I need a model to do this or I'm just going to, all right, because it's splice length and total length. So this just generates a custom MSF. An MSF is the file used by Palette Plus, for those of you who don't know. So in this case, what you do is just generate this MSF code, throw it in the Palette Plus and it just generates filament. And then you can do any model you want on the, um, on the printer and it just uses that filament. And this is the first thing I'm going to be doing tomorrow morning. That is absolutely awesome. Possibly a perjuring. Uh, they'll probably use a shell, to be honest. Brenton, I agree. It is. It's, and it's not just because it's elegant. And it just, once you start, as I said, once you start understanding how it works and all the mathematics that are going through at any one point, it just, it blows your mind away. Hey, print PT3D. How are you doing, Clyde, man? Love you too, buddy. What is with the different temperatures for the materials? How is this managed? Uh, strictly speaking, I think the difference in temperature is just a matter of for the printer to handle. Well, expect a video on this. Oh, yes. <laughs> I called it. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. Oh, yes. I, I, you know what? After the stream, I'm going to throw in... Um, I'm, I'm, I have to try something. <laughs> I was sleepy. Uh, to be honest, I was probably going to run the, st the stream for about half an hour and go to bed. And it's going to be hard now, but I, I have to sleep. I have so much to do tomorrow. So I have two pre-recorded videos that I did this morning. Uh, one of them is about the purge blocks. The other one is about Form Futura's R Titan X uh, ABS filament. Tomorrow I will be recording the Degoma. Neva review, 
then I will be recording the Azure Film Filament Review, then I will be recording um, Functional Friday uh, episode where I designed something and I printed it on the Prusa. I still need to record something for my um, Noobs 3D printing guide, which will revolve around filaments. I also have to edit all these videos tomorrow, upload them onto YouTube, and then schedule them um, to release slowly because I'm going to be away for most of next week. Oh man, that tool is awesome. Yes, that Bulgarian. It does splice filament perfectly, but it's impossible for... If you stop a filament, just because you stop it, it doesn't mean that it's not going to leave residue in the nozzle. If you have a single nozzle and you're going to introduce a secondary color or a third or a fourth, there is always going to be residue there, so it has to be cleaned out. Thank you very much, Clyde, man. Dude, I really hope you're doing fine, man. It's, I haven't seen for such a long time. Can you use the Palette Plus to splice filament to be used later on an independent print? Yes, absolutely. Just as that feature that I did now, you can actually just do that and just let the filament go through and yeah, it'll print. And then you can just roll it up in a spool and throw it. Oh man, the ideas that are coming in my head right now. <laughs> oh, this is going to be absolutely awesome. See, I was going to test like TPU and soluble support, but now I want to do Vasis. Ah, that's a shame, Clyde. <laughs> hey, Florian. Um, well. Probably, I'll probably be here till about maybe another 20 minutes. It'll be one o'clock in the morning here. Um, and I have so much to do tomorrow to get ready for next week. Joe, would it be possible to use a dual independent extruder printer? and use the first extruder for the palette and the second extruder for PVA support. Um, well, strictly speaking, I think you could, honestly. I think you could. Um, but then again, you can still use three colors and um, uh, a PVA support with the palette plus. Are you not getting enough from YouTube like many other YouTubers? For some reason, they cannot monetize their content. Andre, um, I, I can monetize, but the thing is, you know, YouTube generates maybe a couple of hundred euros a month, <laughs> maybe, if that. Um, but it, if they cannot monetize their content, it's even if some word sounds like some other word that they feel shouldn't be monetized, they will debate it, but you can still um, sort of fight it and they will recheck it because most of, the, most of those videos get flagged automatically for non-monetization. And then you can just contest it. I had it happen to me once on the uh, episode where I did the uh, rigiding PETG filament review. Um, I just contested it and they activated the monetization on that. Thank you very much, Clyde. I appreciate your words, man. 
How do you store your PVA support filament? So I have um, one of those um, containers, plastic containers with a lid. I have foam around it to seal it. I have silica gel tablets inside and it's constantly closed. Um, I have a um, humidity monitoring device and it tells me that on average my humidity in there is about, I think it's about 9%. Hey, Carmelo, nice stuff. Isn't that a lot of wasted plastic? For this particular model, yes. If it was a larger model, it wouldn't look that bad. It's not wasted if it makes the nice model. It's true. That is correct. Plus, it looks pretty. Okay. It's gone all quiet now. This is looking so good. <laughs> Have you looked into filament recycling? I'd love to. Um, but unfortunately, Malta, no one produces filament. And in my case, it, it would be extremely expensive to ship out any residual filament or parts that I don't use for recycling. So I just use normal recycling uh, in Malta, but not for filaments, just normal recycling. Have a good night, Pink Mouse. Ooh, Branch and Sheen. Ooh, Mosaic. That's actually a very good idea. Take note of that. It would be great if Mosaic came out with a companion tool that shredded and re-extruded a spool of filament. That would be so awesome. I agree, that Bulgarian. Um, I'm going to try to do something. I have to experiment first a bit. Um, I'm going to try to do something and I'm going to see how that goes. Um, but yes, the idea is that I want to see what happens or a way to melt the plastic in a controlled manner. Hey, every Joe. Yeah, it is getting late, man. Do you have to store PVA in a dry chamber? Because I still wait for my MMU and I order PVA as well. Yes, you do. PVA um, is very susceptible to humidity. Um, if it's the kind of filament that in Malta, when it's 70% humidity, if I'm doing a print, um, which takes about 10 hours, if it fails, um, the next day, I won't be able to print with that material. I have to put it back um, in a hydration, a dehydration chamber and, um, and then wait for it to dry out and start printing again. PLA and PVA and mix it with compost. I, you, honestly speaking, you might be able to do it. It's PLA is starch-based filament, um, corn starch-based. So why not? It's biodegradable. Carmelo, um, send me a message. Um, I might help you decide. <laughs> Lars, why do you want to buy this when you can just buy a dual extruder printer? It's much faster to print, right? Um, it makes no difference in speed. It's printing at this speed because I set it to print at this speed. The Palette Plus doesn't control the speed. All the Palette Plus does is splices the filament. Also, a dual extruder printer can print in two materials or two colors. This can print in four materials. 
Um, also, when you buy a dual extruder printer, it's just that printer, whereas this can be used on any printer. Gordon H. I highly recommend Malta for a holiday with small children. I really, really, truly do. Joe, by dehydration chamber, do you mean a food dehydrator? I have one I got in a thrift shop. It could be. I, I did a custom one. <laughs> Hi, Joe, I've got 250 pounds to spend on my first 3D printer, which I want my eight-year-old daughter to use with me. What do you recommend? Ender 2, Monoprice Select, or are there any others? Uh, Monoprice Select. Um, I honestly, honestly, I actually, you know what? Either are fine. Uh, the Monoprice Select is, is very, very good. I'm doing the series on that. Um, so I would highly suggest you check out Profab 3D. Um, I have links in the, um, in the video descriptions of my uh, new 3D printing guide. I'm actually really enjoying that printer. It's really easy to use. Awesome, Andre. Hey, Blake. And what a small bed was well, it not? Malta is absolutely awesome for everything. Is there a way to get rid of the purge block? You can minimize it, but if it's a single extruder, there's always going to be a purge block. And even if you have a dual extruder, even if there are two dual extruders, they still need to prime. So you're still going to have either a purge block or a purge bucket. Um, Patrick, um, um, I'm guessing there is. Um, honestly speaking, I don't know. Uh, if Derek is still online, maybe he can answer that. But if it can go up to 100 millimeters a second, I'd be interested to try it out um, <laughs> with the TiVo little monster. <laughs> Do I have to try this with a 0 0.2 millimeter nozzle on Prince Mall? Yeah, true. Oh man, Eddie Moser, dude, thank you. Stop spending your money on me, man. Joe, any chance on a series of videos on 3D printing costume props for the Comic-Con? Honestly speaking, um, my buddy who has this game shop has told me that he would like to start promoting it. Um, so I might do something. I really might. I want to start also doing like short videos where I print something and just be a short video of something I printed which I think is cool and I'll show you the settings I printed it at just random videos because they're being really really highly requested crazy idea but what about a BCN 3D Sigma with two palettes how about a Prusa multi-material with four palettes and maybe four palettes attached to each palette <laughs> Can it use ABS? Unfortunately, at the moment, ABS is not supported. But you have PETG, PLA, TPU, um, flex, um, um, uh, soluble support. I have a CR10. What do you recommend for instead of putting tape glue on it? Buy a payo poly sheet. Um, I don't know if they have it that size. I think they do. Yes, they do 30 by 30. 
Seriously, make yourself a favor, do yourself a favor and buy a Payo Poly sheet. It is really good and it's very cheap. If you were going to spend your own money, what would you buy? A BCN 3D Sigma R17 or this? So, honestly speaking, if I was about, if I had 2,600 euros to spend on the Sigma or this, I love the Sigma, but this costs 850 euros. I would still have 1,800, 1,700 euros left. With that money, I could buy a couple of printers and then I can use the Palette Plus on both. <laughs> Carmelo, um, so yes, um, it's Malta Geek Paradise. Um, I will be doing a video soon because I did a functional print for some uh, for a board game that I got from him. Um, um, so uh, I'll be linking in that video description. But yes, Malta Geek Paradise. Tell him I sent you if you want to buy anything. Not not because I get commission. He's just a very good friend of mine. Uh, but he'll give you a good price, and he does international shipping as well. If you make the purge box smaller and set in filter print first, does it work as good? Um, unfortunately, you cannot do it, but it would help. But to a certain extent, it wouldn't make a difference, especially if you have small parts in the model. <laughs> yes, Lars. <laughs> Andre, he had a baby recently, so uh, probably he's just very busy. How much quality do you give 3D printing with a Delta versus a Cartesian printer? Honestly speaking, um, I probably... Deltas have really good quality. I, I wouldn't say they have the best quality, but to a certain extent, I think like, for example, with the Micro Delta rework, I had the most insanely beautiful prints um, until I came across the Anacubic i3 Mega at 100 microns. And even the Giant RMG 200 at 100 microns prints really well. So it all depends, I mean, the Prusa, the Prusa is a brilliant printer for quality. Um, possibly more so before I put the multi-material upgrade on it. Um, but yeah, it's, it all depends on the build quality of the printer. Asada Adada. <laughs> Price. For what? The filament? The palette plus costs about 850 about eight hundred dollars or eight hundred fifty sterling. Oh, top of designs, man! Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so so much, man. Joe, what's the best distance between the nozzle and the bed? To, to be completely honest, um, while the paper thingy works fine, um, I usually think uh, about 100 microns works. I've come to the point where I have to look at it. And as I see the layer going down, I'll start doing some live adjustments on the bed until I see that, it's, that I feel that it's the right balance or the right thickness. Is it true that deltas work better with the golden ratio or layer heights? Honestly speaking, Greg, I've never tried that. Um, to be honest, I, I found that out today um, from Joel's video, um, but I'll be trying it out. Agree, R. Solomon. I love deltas. I absolutely love deltas. 
I mean, the, the quality of the prints that are coming out of the Neva that I've had on my Micromake Delta rework, um, Micro Delta, sorry, Mic Micromake Delta, Micro Delta rework, Anacubic Cassell, they're all really good prints. I should also be getting the Delta Go from Delta Printer soon. Asada, thank you very much, man. Have you ever thought of doing a maker box? I'm trying to decide if I should get it. Um, I've done a maker box review. To be honest, I stopped it. Um, not because they're bad or anything, but I now have over 250 samples of filament. Because when I started the channel, I went nuts on samples. And I still don't know what I'm going to do with them. <laughs> What about the TiVo Tornado? I should be getting one shortly, so I'll know more. Uh, strictly speaking, if it's exactly like the CR10, expect it to be as good as the CR10 maybe. Um, I still want to look into it, especially the electronics and so on, and see what, if they've improved anything. Logical Waste, how you doing? Doing good, man. But we're about two minutes away from me telling everyone that that's it for me, guys. <laughs> Happy making. <laughs> yeah, Patrick. <laughs> Sample giveaways. That's actually not a bad idea. That really is not a bad idea. I could, but I feel like, oh man, that would cost me an arm and a leg to give to, to mail out 250 samples. <laughs> like 15, by the way, I love when you do these streams. It's so easy to get questions answered. You're welcome, Blake. Thank you very much, man. So this is the reason why I do live streams. Um, I recently kind of got feedback, let's call it feedback, um, which kind of not rubbed me the wrong way. I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I will take constructive criticism any day of the week because that's how I improve. But to anyone who's wondering why I talk so much, why I divert so much, the reason why I do live streams is because I want to interact with you guys. I want to answer questions. Um, so being told that I should focus more on what I'm doing um, and that I shouldn't waste time talking and just concentrate on testing. What's the point of me doing a live stream if I'm not going to talk to you guys and answer your questions? That is literally the only reason why I do live streams, because I want to interact. Burn a rock, you made it! Press the made a review on a TiVo bad news. Yes, that was, I think it was about a year ago, Don. Um, it was on the uh, Tarantula. There's been about four or five different models since then of the Tarantula. Exactly. Actually, what I was thinking is actually doing like a massive vase and just keep on changing filaments. Yeah, I saw a Sada Dada. Um, it looks awesome, but I have a feeling it's going to be exorbitantly expensive to buy their filament because uh, they are closed source, so you can only use their filaments. <laughs> Thanks, Branton. What would be the best tool, in your opinion, to clean up a model? A heated tool like a soldering iron or some sort of rotary tool. To clean up 
It depends what you need to clean up. I think there is actually like, it's like a soldering, very small soldering spoon for, um, for models now, for 3D printed models. Worse than call that anything. Well, that's one way to put it, counterpoint. Well, Bird on a Rock, you actually missed quite a lot. <laughs> but it's okay. You can, you can rewind and watch again. Exactly logical waste. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have nothing wrong against this particular guy. He's actually helped me quite a lot. And, um, so I didn't take it to heart. Uh, and I want to take it as constructive criticism. But for me to concentrate on testing something, if I really want to concentrate and I don't want to do anything else, then I'll do it while I'm not streaming and I'm here, alone. <laughs> this is it at least why I'm here watching and you're not sleeping, <laughs> as I should. Thanks for information, entertaining, kind. You're welcome, Arsalan. Thanks, the gentleman scoundrel. The gentleman scoundrel. I, I'm going to need to know your name one of these days. <laughs> what do you expect new on original Prusa Mark III? Asada Adada. <laughs> I'm not allowed. Uh, I don't know. I was, I, nothing. I don't know. There is a Prusa Mark III? I wasn't aware. John, there you go. John, I have to remember John the Gentleman Scoundrel. Now, I don't think it's, I can tell you this. I've gotten to know Yosef Pusha. Um, Touchscreen is, is a blingy thing. He doesn't do bling. He does functionality. So whatever will happen on the Prusa Mark III will be something good. It will, it will have to be something that will help a user, that will improve the experience, that will improve a print. A touchscreen does, doesn't do anything. Yes, it's nice to have a touchscreen instead of a rotary dial, but it won't make anything to the difference in print quality. Was there a problem with the tarantula that uses a 2020 frame or was it that Delta printer? I have no idea actually. No, I don't think it will have a larger bed to be honest. From my assumptions, they'll probably have a different bed but not a larger bed. Thanks, Joe. I'm working on my DIY channel and focus more on the building and technical aspects of 3D printers as well as other things. Maybe that will accommodate some people. It definitely will, I assure you. Okay, Noah, I will do you a favor. In the meantime, just in case, I'm going to have my finger on the trigger just in case you're going to ask a ridiculous question. <laughs> I, I have always wanted to do live streams because it's... Yep, I figured as much. There you go. So, um, the reason why I had started live streams was apart from to interact is because I wanted to give a user experience, a real world user experience where I don't hide behind my free time alone in here where I don't hide behind the camera and you guys get to see exactly the process unedited 
whether it's a mistake or not. Um, the same way my first live stream this year, I switched on the Tronxy and the lights blew out because the PSU was faulty. These are things that happen and people need to understand that it's not always perfect. There will be failures. Thank you very much, Greg. Have a good night, man. Thank you very much, John and Bird and Rock. Thank you guys so much. Ah, one thing I, I, um, I haven't mentioned is how you calibrate the palette. Because obviously the palette needs to know how far there is from the PTFE tube down to the nozzle and everything. So when you start the printer, you have a calibration process. And that is you enter the printer name, the size, um, where it homes, if it needs to home in a special place, and so on and so forth. What you do then is you download a model, uh, which is this right here. And you slice it in your Simplify 3D profile or Cura profile or any profile that you have as you normally would on the printer. Then you run it through, um, through the calibration process and it spits out a calibration file for the mosaic, uh, for the Palette Plus. And then you simply start loading a piece of transparent filament and it loads automatically, the printer automatically first loads a small piece of transparent filament, then an additional two colors in the Palette Plus in sequence. Once the transparent filament starts coming out of the nozzle, then you just start waiting and start extruding slowly until you see some color come through. As soon as you see some color, you just start the print normally and this is the calibration print, which takes about, I think, about an hour to print. Um, and once that's done, it just, you just enter certain values in the Palette Plus. And the printer would be calibrated, so it, it's much, much easier than it was before with the Palette. Asada... I, it, it can be expensive. It really can be expensive. Um, but then again, I have yet to find a hobby that is not expensive. <laughs> I like motorcycles. They're much more expensive. They're 3D printers, I assure you. It can be. If you become addicted to it, yes, it can be. What's my opinion about the Ender 2? I did a review on it, Toxic. Um, it's actually a surprisingly good little printer. I was really impressed with the quality of the prints. I had some issues with it, but nothing major that couldn't be sorted. Impressive quality. And for what, 150 euros? Very good buy. I honestly speaking, personally, I'd recommend the Ender 2 more than the Anet A8 um, for someone who doesn't want to tinker too much. Okay, so this, this Marvin is printing and it's going to finish and it's going to finish well. And it's 10 past 1 in the morning. And uh, I really don't want to start yawning on the camera. <laughs> so I think, hey, okay. So before I leave, Brennan Fu, ladies and gentlemen, is this... This is the most awesome guy you can come across when it comes to uh, the Mosaic team. Brennan is my contact. He's the guy that reached out to me to, uh, to try out the Palette Plus and the Palette. So please, please give him a round of applause because he's an absolutely awesome guy. And he's probably going to be one of the people that will help you if you ever need any help with the Palette Plus. Absolutely logical ways. By all means, do so. So, Brennan, just, just FYI, it's been going great. Everything worked fine, obviously. Um, and we're about 
two hours and 45 minutes into the Marvin print, but I don't think we'll be here for a very long time. <clears throat> Sorry. I was about to sort of transition into saying my good nights because <laughs> it's 10 past one in the morning here. <laughs> But Brennan is on holiday at the moment, and he just came to say hi. How awesome is that? Hey, Mega Making, unfortunately a bit. <clears throat> um, I was about to bid everyone a good night. Um, postage from here to Michigan, it won't be much. It'll probably be like a buck and a half, two bucks. Good afternoon, Bird and Rock. Yes, it's my inner vision has just has has made it spot on with the Palette Plus. Thanks very much for the stream. The Palette Plus seems to be a very good animal for any print. I will put it on my wish list. Good night and sleep well. All right, so thank you very, very, very much, everyone. Um, let me just do this. Okay, so I just want to say thank you very much to absolutely everyone who has joined in the stream tonight. Um, I actually had a lot of fun. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I've managed to make the Palette Plus justice um, by the way of explaining it and showcasing it. And um, yes, if you guys have any questions, any other questions, please leave them in the comment section as always. I will get back to them. And um, yeah. That's basically it for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bid you guys good night. I want to say thank you very much. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you much for your support. Thank you to Mosaic for letting me play with this awesome piece of engineering. And yeah. That is it for me, guys. Happy making, everyone.